While if I can still kick half as much ass as Denzel does at his age, I will be considering that a personal accomplishment. Dude was born in 1954 and he is still killing it. Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to another new release review. And for today I will be covering The Equalizer 2. The Equalizer 2 is the sequel to The Equalizer that was released in 2014 and is once again directed by Antoine Fuqua and stars Denzel Washington, Pedro Pascal, and Melissa Leo. And the story this time around guys is quite simple. Denzel is forced back into action as The Equalizer because his dear friend Melissa Leo, as shown in the trailers, it is not a spoiler, is murdered in Brussels, Belgium so he springs back into action to get to the bottom of it. So guys, we can just hop right into the positives, and first and foremost, how could I nod after that intro to Denzel Washington, guys, top of the positive list. Like I said, the dude was born in 1954, and he is still absolutely killing it, guys. Everything about him in this movie is great. I love him in this role so much. He's so well-mannered. He speaks to everybody on an equal level. Like, he doesn't pick sides. Even the villains of the movie, he just speaks to them very directly, very just like the same tone as he would anyone else. And he's so well-organized too. I love the whole like kind of OCD thing he has. Like, he always puts his cutlery in the same place. Always does like the same thing before he goes to bed. He does all this stuff just in this certain order. He always has this routine. And of course, the watch, you know, whenever he goes into a room and kicks some ass, you know, he's about to take some guys down, beep beep, starts his timer and stops it at the end to see how good he's doing. I think all that's perfect, as well as the kind of vision that you get when he's about to drop a room full of guys, he just kind of goes zooms in on his eyes and then it goes all slow-mo and then he kind of just looks around the room, seeing where everybody is, seeing where weapons are, stuff like that, and then it just goes into like quick kicking ass. And of course, yeah, he's a total badass too. Next is the action in this movie, which I really enjoy. It's very well shot, it's very dark, it's very gritty. It's very gory and I love it honestly like my favorite kill from the first movie is when he literally shoves a shot glass into somebody's eye like he just shoves it and like scoops it over to their eye and pushes it into their head it's super violent it's super graphic but it's awesome to watch and it's so much fun and same thing with this movie there are a lot of very graphic deaths when he's taking guys down but to me it's awesome the fight scenes feel great the gun plays really great there's a lot of really nice knife fights in this and a lot of hand-to-hand -hand stuff and he gets very creative with his kills as well and something I like about this movie a lot more than the first one too is that this one felt like a lot more of a personal story it was a much better story I found than the first film the first film was still nice it had a bit of heart to it but this one like I said was a much more personal story he's going back out because his dearest and possibly only friend was just murdered and now they're after him too so it feels like a much more personal story in that aspect and I really enjoyed that a lot more in this movie because you felt a lot more connected to the story you felt like Denzel was a lot more connected to the story in this one too and lastly on the positives guys the cinematography in this movie is great. It's very like personal cinematography too. If you look at another one of Anton Fuqua's films, such as Southpaw, that put boxing in the first perspective. The boxing matches overall were great, but when it goes into the first person taking the punches, throwing the punches, that was great. It was a whole new perspective of boxing that we hadn't seen in film before. And it was done in such an interesting and intricate way. Same thing happens with this one. A lot of the slow motion and cool stuff in this is done really well, but there's also a lot of really up close and kind of personal takes on everything when it zooms in on Denzel's eyes, when the guys are walking around with their guns, you're just right on their shoulder. The cinematography in this is great. There's a lot of really nice wide shots and cityscapes. And now into the middle ground. One of the things that I feel like kind of covers both films is I wish there was a lot more backstory. It is revealed in the first film too, and I don't really think it's much of a spoiler because they just kind of gloss over it like it's nothing. But apparently Denzel's character was supposed to have been killed like seven, eight years ago in a bomb, and like no one knows he's alive, he's living a separate life. But that to me, they just kind of like, oh, I thought you were dead, and they just hug him. It's like, oh my god, I'm so glad you're alive. And it's like, they don't touch on it at all, like why he got out, what happened there. It was wife has passed away. In this film they cover a little bit more of his backstory but they never did any flashbacks whatsoever as to you know the bombing that he supposedly survived or his wife at all so I feel like that stuff would have given his character a lot more character would have given a lot more to go on and it kind of sucks that they didn't really cover more of the backstory in either films it's a little bit more in the second one but still not really a whole lot. There's this character in this movie as well uh, his name is Miles and he's this young African-American dude he's kind of caught in the middle he's still kind of going to school but he still also kind of wants to be like a gangster and sell drugs on the street but he also wants to be like an artist like a painter he was a fine character I thought he was I thought he was alright but the thing is to me that bothered me is he felt exactly like Robbie from the first film the guy that wanted to be the security guard in which both of them they act as pretty much the same character just in separate movies as Denzel you know wants to help them because these young men are trying to be something that society tells them they can't be okay so he's like a uh, Robbie in the first film he's like an overweight Spanish guy and he wants to be a security guard but like you know 
since he's overweight and everything, people keep putting him down and he, he you know, he's flipping back and forth between working at the hardware store or his mother's restaurant. Miles is the same way, he kind of, he's on his own. He has to be a gangster to bring in money, but he really wants to be a painter, so Denzel helps him and that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. They're basically the same character in just the two separate films, so I thought like, you know, I wish they would have spiced things up a little bit more there. There's like a hurricane the, in the end of the movie. They kind of foreshadow it up through different like, you know, uh, on the radio and like news feeds and stuff like that. There's a hurricane coming. I have no idea why. The whole final fight sequence, the last act, takes place during a hurricane. It led to some cool imagery, but it did nothing for the fight. I feel like it, the, you know, the whole meeting on this was just like, hey, here's the setup of the fight. Like, this person's gonna go here, they're gonna die here, da 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 and we're gonna take place in this place. Oh, and there's gonna be a hurricane. I don't know why the hurricane's in here, but it's in here. Whatever, I guess. And now for the negatives, guys. The whole first half of the movie, I found, was extremely messy. And that's what kind of brings the movie down quite a bit, is the messiness of the first whole half of the film. It just covers too many storylines at once. It really tries to show that, like, hey, Denzel's helping people, and he's a really nice guy. Like, he helps this old man who survived a concentration camp, trying to find his sister, who he lost, he's trying to help Miles, the guy that I mentioned earlier, as well as he's trying to help this woman, like, I think she's from India or possibly Pakistan um, she's, she's trying to like just kind of has this garden where they live in their complex that they live in he just kind of tries to help a little bit of everybody plus following the main story and I find a lot of the time it's like you're taking these huge breaks from the main story in the first half it's like 10 or 15 minutes of him helping these other people and then five minutes of the main story even times it jumps away from Denzel's character altogether and follows Melissa Leo and then after she is killed it just kind of still follows other bits and pieces around the world so I found there was just way too many jumps way too many plot lines to try to juggle there but luckily they do tighten it up a lot in the second act I feel like this issue could have been solved overall by either making the movie not two hours and chopping it down to about an hour and 40 and just focusing on the main plot or they could have kept the two hour runtime and just focus more on the villains because aside from the main villain you don't really know the villains whatsoever they're just kind of faceless goons who are given a name you don't really spend too much time with them at all and I think with the more personal story the movie definitely would have benefited from focusing on the villains a lot more so I feel like that should have taken up the runtime rather than showing Denzel helping a bunch of people and the fact that this movie is super predictable I was able to predict just about everything in this movie. I don't want to get into spoilers because pretty much everything is a spoiler when I'm predicting it. But yeah, I was just like, hey, this guy's that. Hey, that one did this. Hey, I bet it was these people that did that. So on and so forth. So yeah, this movie ended up being super, super predictable. Overall, guys, I enjoyed The Equalizer 2 quite a bit despite its messy first half, which kind of sucks because it could have been a great movie. The positives, Denzel's great. The action's great. It's dark. It's gritty. It's quick. It's not over the top. It's much more of a personal story, which I really enjoyed. And the cinematography is fantastic. And the middle ground, I wish there was more backstory for Denzel's character, as well as Miles and Robbie are basically the same characters from the first movie onto the second movie and I don't understand why they threw the hurricane into this movie. The negatives, an extremely messy first half as well as this movie I found to be extremely extremely predictable. It's very by the numbers but it's still really enjoyable. For all those reasons I'm going to be giving The Equalizer 2 a 7.5 out of 10. So guys if you like this video be sure to like, subscribe, and comment and let me know do you think The Equalizer 2 surpasses the original Equalizer? And as always guys thank you so much for watching and that's a wrap.